Hello friends. Today I'll be sharing a case about an 50-year-old man who has sustained blunt trauma to the eye a year back. CT lab examination reveals mild phacoidosis. There are areas of sphincter tear. The cataract is a nuclear cataract with about grade 3 sclerosis. Angle evaluation did not reveal any angle recession. Uh, let's see how the case goes so this is the area of uh, subluxation we can see the equator of the lens we have got around 3 to 4 clocks uh, clock hours of zonal dehiscence i begin by making a side port incision in the nasal quadrant so after stirring the capsule i would want to uh, tamponade the area of zonular weakness by using a dispersive ovd The idea of using the dispersive OVD is to ensure that uh, we tamponade that area and prevent the herniation of the vitreous coming through the area of zonular dehiscence and then we make a side port the main incision and as soon as I puncture the anterior capsule for rexus you can see the radial fold uh, in the anterior capsule which is clearly uh, tells a story about the health of the zonules and in such eyes with weak zonules a uh, forceps is always the best bet and i'm using the haldi purka forceps my aim is to perform a 5 mm rexus because i would like to have an optic capture of the lens later on so i'm aiming for a 5 mm slightly nasally decentered keeping into account the uh, some amount of temporal subluxation which we have So once we have achieved the 5 mm rexus the next critical step would be to perform the uh, hydro dissection. Getting a good hydro dissection is always challenging in these eyes because we don't have the counter pressure which is provided by the zonules that's the reason the fluid doesn't spread all around and we always end up struggling with the uh, nucleus rotation. and it's very critical in these eyes because any amount of nuclear rotation is always going to weaken the zonules still further so having done that now i would want to insert the ctr at this stage itself before doing that i would like to always create some space under the anterior capsule by injecting ovd then the ctr is threaded into the bag i always use my left hand to support the ring and to compress it a little bit so that it we don't put enough stress on the healthy zonules care is taken that the ctr is dialed across the weak zone and ensured that the entire weak zone is adequately supported by this ring having a uh, place to ring i go back uh, to my hydro dissection i would want to repeat it again just to ensure that the cortico capsulocortical adhesions are totally broken so after the hydro procedures i move on to my emulsification of the nucleus i bury my phaco probe into the nucleus and i'm performing a vertical chop using a sharp chopper the nucleus uh, is adequately dense so that we could chop the nucleus without any issue However care is to be taken that during rattle separation we don't induce any stress on the zonules I'm avoiding any rotation of the nucleus just once the separation has happened I move on to my probe goes and engages the adjacent uh, uh, nuclear fragment and then the procedure of uh, chopping and lateral separation is continued so again I just lift up the nucleus out of the bag a little bit now Uh, divide it and then i'm aspirating one fragment of it uh, in the pupillary plane again engage the nuclear fragment pull it out of the bag and then emulsify in fact the phaco part was the easiest step in the entire procedure because the nucleus was very free and it was of the right density easily choppable but now i expect the most difficult part would be the aspiration or removing the epinucleus the epinuclear shell is quite thick now so 
before removing my fake hand piece i introduce an irrigating cannula so that i don't lose the chamber then my plan now presently is to do a visco dissection i am using a visco elastic to inject under the anterior capsule i am hoping that by doing this visco dissection i am able to maneuver the epinucleus out of the epi fornices of the capsular bag and i am hoping that this trick is going to work here so once the uh, having done the little bit of visco dissection i go back with my by manual can line try to uh, engage the epinucleus but unfortunately uh, the epinucleus is quite thick and it's refusing to get engaged into the the by manual cannula so the first plan didn't work quite well so i need to resort to the next plan the next plan is to use fluid to dislodge the epinucleus out of the bag i'm trying to go in with my irrigating cannula I'm trying to get under the epinucleus and luckily in the inferior quadrant I could get a cleavage plane by which I could introduce my cannula underneath the epinucleus by doing so the fluid is going to push up the epinucleus out of the bag and then it is gently maneuvered out so once a part of the epinucleus is out of the capsular fornices in the bag uh, it can be very easily aspirated again i'm going with my main incision through the uh, using the irrigation hand piece uh, just to manipulate the entire epinuclear bowl out of the capsular bag and this is a simple trick because sometimes removing the epinucleus can be a challenging and frustrating so using either viscoelastic or the fluid to mobilize the epinucleus out of the bag and once it's in the anterior chamber uh, the aspirating is no big deal at all so once we have removed the epinucleus we are left with a very little bit of a cortex the cortex again is stuck between behind the ring and equatorial movement of your cannula equatorial uh, way of stripping the cortex is going to help us in such a situation again care has to be taken that we don't damage the the rexus So the last bit of cortex is removed having done that time for intraocular lens implantation i have chosen a multi piece uh, high ol i have created space in the ciliary sulcus by using sodium hyaluronate the proximal haptic is placed over the anterior capsule in the ciliary sulcus and the lens is dialed so that both the haptics are now lying in front of the anterior capsule and in the ciliary sulcus So I'd want to achieve an optic capture but before doing that it's critical that I remove all the the cohesive OVD which is there both in front and behind the lens in just a couple of minutes and the entire cohesive OVD is aspirated to achieve the optic capture the irrigation is maintained by my irrigation hand piece and the dialer is going to push the lens and manipulate the optic uh, posteriorly so that we achieve the tuck uh, wherein the both the edges of the optics are lying behind the capsule where the, the two haptics are in the sulcus the ovalization of the rexus is a clear cut indicator that the optic capture has been perfectly achieved i am going to inject some pilocarpine to constrict the pupil and then a little bit of a triamcinolone acetate to ensure that there has been no prolapse of the vitreous luckily there has been none uh, before removing the irrigating hand piece i would want to hydrate the wounds so that there is no shallowing of the anterior chamber so once the hydration is completed and the case is done it looks good and 3 days post op this is how the eye looks the cornea is clear uh, interestingly i find that in eyes with these optic capture the amount of pseudo phacodonosis is very minimal uh, and on dilatation this is how it looks the lens is nicely uh, trapped between the two leaflets of the rexus margin and it looks quite secure stable and hopefully it also ensures long term centration 
So this is what I call as the I will trap technique wherein the CTR in the back and a hydrophobic multi-piece lens in the sulcus with an optic capture. Thank you so much for your attention. Hope this helps.